Let's go to Santa's sleigh because I'm feeling very grateful for gifts that were given to me. Danny just brought me this from his trip in Belize. And when Colleen and I first got married, we started collecting little figurines like this of a man and a woman embracing each other. So I think that segues into a really good conversation that we could have today. But we'll wait until we break in to Santa's sleigh. I wonder where Santa Claus is. A boxer? Huh? It depends if I have to box. <laughs> I box, right? It's necessary. Hey, hey, what's going on, baby? All right, man. How you doing? Are you waiting for Santa Claus? Yeah, I'm, I am Santa Claus. This is oh, <laughs> what y'all doing? This is a documentary on yourself, or something? No, we're doing a documentary on Santa Claus. What's good? But we found him right here, so yeah, that's the old man. Maybe we should interview you. Yeah. Now nah, I'm messing with you, man. Enjoy. Have a good day. Place my little gift right there. On Donner, on Dixon, on Connor, on Frickson. Right? So today's video is sponsored by Audible.com, which if you've been watching my videos long enough, you know I've been using Audible in order to, to enlighten myself, read books, and learn. Oh, oh shit. Now before I offer a few book recommendations on sex, that's what I'd like to talk to you guys about today, Audible is offering our listeners a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audible.com strength and browse the over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening today. It's that easy. Go to audible.com strength that's audible.com slash strength and get started today. There's a link down below in case you guys are wondering. The purpose of today's video is to share some of my ideas with regard to sex. And it's interesting that I got this beautiful uh, gift here and I'm gonna bounce from Santa Claus wet ass seat. And uh, I'm gonna walk down by the water. So what I'd like to do is just offer you guys three book recommendations all revolving around sex. It's been a topic of interest to a lot of people in my uh, asking questions and, uh, and I've got a cool story about a young man who came to my gym yesterday who asked about marriage and my stance on it. So uh, the very first book that I'd recommend is Enlightened Sex by David Dita. Uh, if you've read The Way of the Superior Man, you know just how powerful his ideas are. S Enlightened Sex revolves around sexual energy, masculine and feminine sexual energy and the interplay as it relates to human sexuality uh, as well as Taoist sexual secrets in fact I just downloaded that one yesterday so I haven't listened to it yet and then Sex at Dawn which was recommended by Paul Check. and uh, in fact the young man that came to strength camp yesterday for open gym asked me about Sex at Dawn as it relates to the scientific research uh, revolving around monogamy uh, or poly, polyamorism, like which is, which is appropriate for human beings. Are human beings supposed to be monogamous? Are you supposed to be married? Are you supposed to be, uh, what would it be if, to have multiple partners? Poly, poly, polygamy or polyamorous? And um, the very first thing that I had to make very clear to the young man was that I have no stance. I'm not like pro-marriage or anti-marriage. I think that way of thinking doesn't take into account the individual, right? For someone to say that all people should do this because it's correct, or all people should avoid this because it's correct, to me doesn't take into account the variability in character, doesn't take into the variability of our vision and our purpose for ourselves. So there's so much more to it than being pro-marriage or anti-marriage, you see what I'm saying? The question I ask, especially as it relates to it being scientifically sound, is it biologically sound for human beings to engage in activity X, Y, or Z, is how is it working out for you, right? Now obviously marriage isn't working out for 60% of Americans as most people divorce. And if it's not working out for you, well then end the shit. Don't do it. That's really the question. If you're 
weightlifting, if you're taking supplements, if you're on some sort of a strange diet in order to get a result, it's all unnatural just like marriage may or may not be. But how is it working out for you? That's really the question that I pose. So yesterday at Open Gym, one of our attendees asked me a question. He said, Elliot, I've been in a relationship for quite a few years with the same girl. How do you maintain a long-term loving relationship with the same person, especially given all of the temptations and opportunities with women that may be out there? And all I could really do is relay my experience with relationship. Those of you who know, I've been with my wife since we were 14 years old. We started dating at teenagers. And it's been over 20 years since we've been together. And the way I look at it is relationships are an opportunity to grow stronger. And I look at it like that with regard to my wife. I look at it with regard to my children. I look at it with regard to my friends. I look at every relationship in my life as an opportunity to become a stronger version of myself. So when people talk about devotion and commitment to a relationship, they're talking about the second step. The first step, in my opinion, is devotion and commitment and the discipline that's required to be a stronger version of yourself. The strongest version of Elliot Hulse honors his commitments. The strongest version of Elliot Hulse is devoted to a stronger version of himself and to the mission, the purpose, what I'm doing in life to empower others. And a stronger version of Elliot Hulse looks like somebody who does what they have to do whether they feel like it or not. That means you do every day what is required to fulfill your vision or your purpose for the stronger version of you. So in relationships, as in health, fitness, fat loss, business, anything else in life, you're going to have temptations. You're going to have distraction. You're going to have shiny objects, right? If you're on a diet and you're trying to lose weight and somebody brings a box of shit donuts, jelly donuts to your job, well, of course, you're gonna wanna eat one of those donuts, right? Just like when a beautiful woman is being seductive with you if you're in a relationship and she's not your wife, she's not your girlfriend, she looks like that jelly donut, you wanna taste it, right? You wanna eat it. But just like that person on his diet who's trying to be a stronger version of himself, who has a vision for himself and for his life, says no to that donut, you say or I say, and this is how I reconcile it. I say no to the temptation. I say no to the woman or the seduction or the opportunity because it doesn't line up with my vision for myself. It doesn't line up with my purpose. I would never deny that there's temptation there. I would never say that, man, this woman looks great and I wouldn't mind being with her, right? I mean, that would just be denying biology. Sure, she's sexy. Sure, she's attractive. Sure, she smells good. But so does that fucking donut. Right? And if I eat that donut, I'm not gonna reach my heights. If I have sex with that woman, I'm not gonna reach my heights. So the commitment in relationships, I want you to understand, and the devotion in your relationships, I want you to understand, is not so much for the other person. We like to take and give our power away to other people, saying, well, oh shucks, I'm committed in a relationship, I'm married, that sucks. I'm stuck in this prison, I can't do what I want, my girlfriend, my wife, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. You could look at it that way, or you could look at it like, damn, there's an opportunity for me right now to say no. There's an opportunity right now for me to put up boundaries, to be disciplined, to be devoted and, and committed to what I know is a stronger version of myself, to what I know is gonna support my purpose and my mission in life, and I'm gonna make a decision right now whether I feel like it or not. When you commit to your relationship, when you commit and you're devoted to a stronger version of yourself, when you do with discipline every single day what you have to do whether you feel like it or not, you allow the world and every opportunity that you get to be a stronger version of yourself and you're an inspiration to others. Done.